There are few things today that make the common man more angry than modern art. And I think perhaps I can explain why. I've a few times been, for instance, to the Baltic Art Gallery, which is a massive and impressive building made out of an old flour mill on the banks of the Tyne here in Newcastle. Well, actually, it's on the Gateshead side. And uh, more than once, uh, more than a few times, I've heard someone say something very similar to, I think I better leave now before I get really angry. You see, the people were just frankly insulted by what they saw there. Uh, now, um, I went to a, an art exhibition in the castle in uh, Ljubljana in Slovenia a year or two ago, and there was this program, um, and uh, I, I kept it, and it's just amazing. Now, uh, you can see there, there are two pages of text. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to read out the whole thing, but um, you're just going to have to take my word for it that it's all like this. I'm just going to read just this bit here, just a couple of paragraphs, and... Um, uh, I, it's, it's difficult to imagine, I know, that all of it is like this, but, but trust me, it's all like this. Brace yourself. I'll probably uh, mispronounce his name. Mursad Begic is a master sculptor in every sense of the word, even though it's two words. His approach towards sculpture is versatile, monumental and vital as he manifests his experiences and artistic notions in a unique artistic language. We are confronted by a persuasive observer who pours out his inner feelings and his personal world views which reflect the deeper questions about human existence. Being is the closest thing, but closeness is most distant to man. To transform remoteness into closeness is the task of art. To change absence into presence in a way which never reveals its finality. His sculptural installations seem like some sacred worlds from the hereafter. The art is eternal and surpasses human life. It is endless, but it can exist only through and because of the living. As great works of art exceed the lifespan of their makers, likewise the spirit surpasses the material body. To this artist, sculpture is a constant interweaving of life and death, in which art doesn't end with death, but offers a timeless experience of an aesthetic sublimation of Eros and Thanatos. Yeah, it really is all like that, but I'm going to spare you any more. Now! I imagine, after I've read that, that you are just bursting with curiosity to know what, what was this astounding piece of art with which I was privileged to be confronted in that, uh, in that tower, in that castle in Slovenia that time. Well, I can tell you. I took a couple of still photographs of it because I was just quite amazed. was almost literally a pile of dung. I say almost literally, it didn't actually smell like dung, but it definitely looked like dung. It was this brown gungy with, with hay and hair and stuff in it. And it was just sort of blobbed down on some uh, cheap crumpled uh, plastic sheeting. And it didn't seem to have any shape or pattern or anything to recommend it to anyone. And frankly, I was just insulted. You know, not only was it praise to the rafters in the text, but it made absolutely no attempt to be understood. It made no attempt to please me. And that is insulting. That makes you angry. Um, imagine you've thrown a party. It's a costume party. Uh, and you have a theme. Uh, I don't know, ancient gods of... Egypt, for instance, and loads of people come to your party, and your parties are famous for being really, really good, and there's a very high standard of costume, and one person just turns up in jeans and t-shirt, and when, you know, comments are made on this, he just doesn't care. Well, you know, he didn't make an effort, and that's sort of an insult, an insult to the host. The host has gone to a huge amount of trouble and expense to throw this massive party to which this guy has been invited free, it's not being charged, and he makes no effort at all. He just says, I'm not interested in all this, you know, Egyptian stuff. Well, if you're not, don't go to the party! 
You know, don't put on an art exhibition in this sacred, special space, an art gallery. As soon as you put something in an art gallery, it says to the viewer, this is special, this is good stuff, look at this, this is worth looking at, it's special, it's art. And then you look at it and you say, well, they've gone to no effort. What we are impressed by is effort and skill. And we also quite like people who try to please us. So effort, skill, and an attempt, an apparent attempt at least, to please. And all of these things are missing in a very great amount of modern art. Uh, if you look at um, the welds on something that's uh, been welded together, they're often really bad welds. You think, well, this person just hasn't learnt the craft of welding very well. Um, a lot of uh, painters, you can see that their brushwork's rubbish. They're, and if you, if you interrogate them on this, uh, they all say something, oh, yeah, it's not about that, though. It's not about you know, getting the brushwork just right. Well, no, no, learn your craft. You know, if, if I uh, do a Lindy Hop dance and, and I just haven't bothered to learn the steps, well, I'm not going to you know, impress anyone. And if I don't um, put a bit of pizzazz into it and, hey, everyone, I'm here to entertain you, no one's going to want to watch me. You know, if, if I just dance as though I don't give a monkey's what the audience thinks of it, then the audience is going to be insulted, as I am insulted and lots of other people are insulted when they go into an art gallery and see a pile of dung. Um, it makes no attempt to be understood. It makes no attempt to be pretty. Uh, there's no craftsmanship in it. You don't look at it and think, wow, that's really impressive. And there's no evidence that it took any amount of time either. Now, there's an Australian artist called, I may be saying this wrongly, Ron Muick. And even now, the, the art establishment is really snooty about him. But the public loves his stuff. Now, he used to be um, in special effects in movies. He used to make uh, prosthetics for, for horror films and that sort of thing, little puppets as well. He worked on Labyrinth, I think. And he makes these amazingly realistic sculptures out of wax and so forth. And you look at them and instantly you can tell two things. One, that must have taken flipping ages to do. You look at a, a leg on, on a human uh, figure that he's done and every single hair has been placed into the skin on someone's leg. And you go, wow, look at all the hairs. That's amazing. That must have taken absolutely ages. And you step back and the skin tones are so convincing. It's so lifelike. There's a huge amount of effort and a huge amount of skill has gone into that. And so the public likes that sort of stuff. The, the public looks at those sculptures and thinks, wow, that's that's good. I like that. At last, I found something worth looking at, worth traveling some distance to see in an art gallery. But of course, the art establishment, oh no, no, they don't like that sort of stuff because, I don't know, skill went into it. <laughs> Lindy 